call to order the July 14, 2021 public meeting of the Virginia Beach Planning Commission. My name is David Weiner. I'm the chair. And very nice to see everybody back in here and smiling faces. Um, I'd like to start off, uh, Mr. Um, Costin is going to lead us in prayer. Mr. Horsley will lead us in a pledge. Please stand. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you, God, for your many tender mercies and benefits. God, we ask today as we come to discuss the business of this city, God, that you would look on us and bless us with your wisdom and your understanding. God, guide us into each and every decision. Let it be for the benefit of those we serve. God, we ask that you would continue to have favor on us and bless us. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Redman has volunteered to introduce the members. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. Um, I'm going to start on that side of the uh, dais over there. That um, pretty lady on the end is Kay Wilson. She is a deputy city attorney. Um, I think I got the title right, who um, is in charge of land use matters and is here every month helping us in our jobs. Um, next to her is Mr. John Costin. John's a retired fire captain who represents the Centerville district. No? What's that? At How do I keep? Why do I keep making that mistake with you? Okay, at large, <laughs> um, and it, he represents the city at large. Um, next to him is Robin Klein. Robin is a um, is a social worker, mm -hmm. so um, she has a busy day. Um, <laughs> next to Robin is George Alcaraz. George represents the Beach District. He is a contractor. He's a restaurant owner. He does. He's a events promoter. He does a whole bunch of things. I can't keep up. I can't keep up with Dee either. She's got like five different jobs. Dee Oliver um, serves at large. She was most recently our chairman, vice chairman before that. Um, and um, gosh, you don't have a lot of time left. Thanks. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, you, oh, you get, I'm not here. that old. You start, no, no, not that, I wonder what I meant. You start getting <laughs> sad this time of year when you, people start to get towards the end of their terms. Anyway, um, she's very capable and we're glad to have her. Of course, next to her is Don Horsley. He is a farmer. Um, <clears throat> he has all things Princess and District, but he serves at large. Um, in the middle there is Mr. Weiner. David Weiner is our chairman. He represents the Kempsville District, um, and he is a commercial salesman in the building industry. Normally, um, next to him would be Jack Wall. Jack's not here today. Jack is our uh, vice chairman, and he's an engineer who represents the Rose Hall District. This is Michael Inman. He is an attorney, really good attorney. Um, <laughs> he also <laughs> serves at large. Um, my name is Dave Redmond. Uh, I represent the Bayside District. I'm a commercial real estate broker. Um, Whitney Graham is not here today. Uh, he, uh, I don't know where's Whitney, he's probably on vacation. So, yeah. so vacation time of year. He represents the Lynn Haven District and then we have one member who recently resigned which is why we have an open seat here. Um, and that is Mr. Bobby Tahan. He is the planning director and he's gonna share some of his staff names and personalities with you. Mr. Tahan. Thank you Mr. Redmond. Uh, clerking today, we have Nicole Garrido and Pam Sandley. Also assisting with clerking is Lynn Ronker. Uh, as far as planning staff, uh, the rest of the planning staff, we do have Carolyn Smith, the planning administrator, Waddow and Marshall Coleman with our uh, planning, uh, current planning uh, group and planning administration, as well as Hank Morrison uh, and Ashby Moss from our zoning division. For those that aren't aware, Ashby is the acting zoning administrator now, uh, as Kevin Kemp has, uh, has moved on to other things. So. Um, we also have Tori Eisenberg, who's with the city attorney's office, that always assists us as well. Uh, Whitney McNamara, planner in our uh, environmental section. Our interns that we have, Grace Pullen and uh, Maddie Lohman, and our city traffic engineer, Rick Lohman, and Don Perron uh, with public utilities as well. Thank you, Mr. DeHaan. And I will add, by the way, because I have to, um, the two interns uh, gave presentations this morning in our informal session. They both did, I thought, a terrific job. Um, so I hope you're enjoying your summer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, uh, Madam Clerk, would like to the, the rules and how the meeting is going to uh, go today, please. Sure. Today we will have both in-person speakers and speakers participating via WebEx. When an agenda item has been called, we will recognize the applicant or their representative first, whether they are in person or via WebEx. 
Following the applicant or their representative, in-person speakers will be called next, and then the speakers participating via WebEx. For WebEx speakers, please wait two to three seconds to begin to ensure the commission hears your complete remarks. Please note if the speaker does not respond or if a technical issue occurs which renders the comments unintelligible, we will move on to the next speaker or the next order of business. Now I will read the public hearing rules. The Virginia Beach Planning Commission takes pride in being fair and courteous to all parties in attendance. It is important that all involved understand how the commission normally conducts its meetings. It's equally important that everyone treat each other and the members of the commission with respect and civility. The commission requests that if you have a cell phone, please either silence it or turn it off. This is an abbreviated explanation of the rules. The complete set of rules is located in the front of the Planning Commission agenda. Following is the order of business for this public hearing. Withdrawals and deferrals. The chairman will ask if there are any requests to withdraw or defer an item on the agenda. Consideration of these requests will be made first. Consent agenda. The second order of business is the consideration of the consent agenda, which are those items that the Planning Commission believe are unopposed and which have favorable staff recommendation. Regular agenda. The Commission will then proceed with the remaining items on the agenda. Speakers in support or opposition of an agenda item will have three minutes to speak unless they are solely representing a large group such as a Civic League or Homeowners Association, in which case they will have 10 minutes. Please note that the actions taken by the Commission today are in the form of a recommendation to the Virginia Beach City Council. The final decision to approve or disapprove an application will be made by the City Council. <clears throat> the Commission thanks you for your attendance and we hope that your experience here today leaves you feeling that you have been heard and treated fairly. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, next is the uh, deferral items. If you have an item to be deferred, please come forward. Welcome. Chairman, Vice Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, for the record, my name is Lisa Murphy, local zoning attorney, and I'm here requesting that you defer items 14, 15, 16, and 17, the uh, street closure and conditional change in zoning for the Marlin Bay project. And that's for 60 days, For correct? 60 days, yes. yes. Okay, great. Thank All right, you. Thank you. To, to be clear, that, that is to the September public hearings. Sorry. September, okay. Mr. Don, welcome. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, Eddie Berdon, Virginia Beach Attorney representing Wakefield Development, case number seven, uh, for an indefinite deferral, but hope we see you as early as next month. Thank, Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. Um, any other items? The chair has been told items 27 or 28, 29, and 30 also are an indefinite deferral. And Madam Clerk, do we still have a speaker on item 17? Yes, we do. So we're going to let him to come forward now. Daniel right. Murphy. What, what number did? 17. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for your service. I really appreciate it. Please um, state your name for the record, please. My name is Daniel Murphy. I am the president of the Ocean Park Civic League. I am in favor of the deferral today for the Marlin Bay Project. I would just ask that. Um, there be a little bit better communication on deferrals. We had a number of residents who were very concerned about the meeting and um, would like to provide input, input during the <coughs> September meeting. So if um, Mr. Tahan and his staff could ensure that letters go out properly and it's uh, publicized, I would appreciate the notices. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. To, to clarify, um, Mr. Weiner, the, the action of the deferral has to be taken by the Planning Commission, so there's no there's no mailing that we do in between uh, those, but we do we do our best to notify the the public uh, the best way we can, the best way we can, especially if they've contacted us. So we will continue to keep open that line of communication. Thank, thank you. I just there was a lot of confusion. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, can I get a motion? Um, I have a motion to defer items seven, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. We have a motion by Mrs. Oliver. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Horsley. Vote is open. By recorded vote of eight in favor and zero against, agenda items seven, 
have been deferred indefinitely. 14, 15, 16, and 17 have been deferred to the September meeting. 28, 29, and 30 have been deferred indefinitely. Thank you. Next are withdrawals. Any items to be withdrawn? Please come forward. The chair is aware of items 24, 26, and 27 to be withdrawn. Can I have a motion for that, please? Um, no, I'll make a motion for item 24 and 26 and 27 to be withdrawn. I have a motion, come second. I'll second. Motion by Mrs. Oliver, second by Mrs. Klein. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Redmond and Mr. Inman. Yes, you vote. What? Dave. Mr. Redmond. Yes. Take your vote, please. Um, vote. No, I will not. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to abstain on this. I have a, um, a letter on file with the city attorney's office. I abstain. One of these is an STR application. I um, routinely abstain on all STR applications for reasons which I've already stated and which are on file with the city attorney's office. Sorry. By recorded Thank vote of seven in favor, zero against, and one abstention, agenda items 24, 26, and 27 have been withdrawn. Thank you. Next order of business is the consent agenda, and our vice chair, Mrs. Oliver, will take over. Thank you. Welcome. Today we have 12 items on the consent agenda. First item is item number one, and um, City, um, our city attorney Kay Wilson is going to um, talk about this uh, ordinance for us. Okay, this is an ordinance to amend uh, section 242.1 of the zoning ordinance in regard to tattoo parlors and body piercing establishments. At this time, there is a requirement that they be located 600 feet away from another tattoo parlor or um, body piercing establishment we will be deleting that requirement so that they may be closer together we've had an influx of um, what are called um, personal makeup and that is still considered tattooing even though that's done in a lot of beauty parlors so that's why we feel it's 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 appropriate to get rid of the 600 feet um, distance right. thank you the um, next item is item number two and three, which is a Virginia Beach Development Authority, is the applicant, um, Virginia Beach Development Authority and Lynn Lynn LLC. It's a modification of proffers. The address is 1941 General Booth Boulevard and portion of the Corporate Landing Park in the Princess Anne District. Um, is there a representative for this item? Yes, ma'am. I'm John Richardson. I represent the applicant. We're happy to answer any questions, but we understood it was on consent. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any opposition to this being on the consent agenda today? All right. Hearing none, um, Commissioner Horsley has um, been asked to read this into the record for us. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. A portion of the property known as uh, Dr. Johnny's Appliances was rezoned in 1994. Uh, from AG2 to, to B2 community business. Now, uh, the corporate landing, which backs up to this property, um, is uh, this, this request is including a, to modify the conditional rezoning or agreement associated with corporate landing to remove 0.73 acres from the business park, which is the uh, corporate landing business park um, to Dr. Johnny's to expand the opera to expand his operation build a warehouse and the addition of the warehouse and uh, is, is consistent with the comp comprehensive plan um, and the uh, I think the, the change of ownership from the industrial authority uh, to to the uh, appliance business is totally uh, exactly what, what this, this is all about when they established the uh, commercial business park. So there was no, uh, no opposition to this taking place. I think it's a good community uh, business that's taking place down there and uh, no opposition to it. So, and staff agreed to it. So we put it, placed it on the consent agenda. 
Great, thank you. The next item is item number five. Um, is there a representative for this? Thank you, Commissioner Oliver, <coughs> members of the commission, Eddie Berdon, British attorney representing the Sneeds. Appreciate being on the consent agenda. All four conditions recommended by staff are acceptable to my clients. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any opposition to this um, being on the uh, consent agenda today? Great. Thank you. This is an um, application for the, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Sneed on a street closure, which is a seven and a half foot. Let's read that in the record. Huh? Let's read that. I will. Um, by 50 foot portion of the unimproved alley adjacent to 828 Vanderbilt in the Beach District and Mr. Alcarez is going to read this into the record for us. All right, thank you. Uh, again, this is a application for a street closure for Mr. Martin Sneed and Miss Linda P. Sneed and they are requesting a closure or portion of the platted unnamed and unimproved alley that is adjacent to the rear lot line. As shown on the submitted uh, street closure exhibit on, in the plan, um, in the report, the proposal includes closure of half of the 15-foot wide alley, totaling 375 square feet, and incorporating the land into the adjacent residential lot identified as Lot 3, Block 14, Crowtan Beach. And with the staff recommended conditions, the Planning Commission has uh, put it on the consent agenda for approval. The next um, item on our agenda is item number six, KABD Development, LLC, located at the corner of Fisher Arch and Princess Anne Road for an eating and drinking establishment. Is there an um, representative for this application here today? Is there any opposition to this um, being on the consent agenda today? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Horsley is going to read this into the record, please. No appearance appear means that they would have to accept the conditions that we, we propose today. But the uh, applicant is requesting a condition conditional use permit for eating and uh, drinking establishment located on some O2 office in O2 office district. Um, there's a requirement that the, uh, in the Eating, eating and drinking establishment cannot occupy more than 10% of the floor area, which just doesn't. Um, it's based, it's a health-based eating establishment, and it, they uh, kind of coexist with the uh, health uh, activities that take on, take place there in that office uh, building. So um, there was no opposition. Staff seemed to think it was all right, and we do also, so we placed it on the consent agenda. So this means it'll, the conditions will be approved also. Great. Thank you. The next item is item 8, which is the Elias Properties in Virginia Beach Independence, LLC. Hi. How are you? Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. For the record, my name is Rob Beeman, local land use attorney with the Troutman Pepper Law Firm here today on behalf of the applicant. We've had a chance to read the conditions. They're acceptable, and we appreciate being on the consent agenda. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Is there any opposition for this being on the consent agenda today? Hearing none, Commissioner Klein is going to read this into the record for us. The applicant proposes to rezone a 2.17-acre parcel from B1 Neighborhood Business District. Excuse me to conditional B2 community business district in order to operate a commercial retail store in the vacant building on the site. Um, the property was rezoned from PDH2 to conditional B1 uh, back in 1995 for a pharmacy. Uh, in order to operate a general retail space, it needs a rezoning to B2. Uh, it was previously a Rite Aid that was developed in 1997. It has since been vacant since 2005. Uh, the applicant is proposing a Dollar Tree in the space and no major structural changes are proposed. Um, uh, based on the application and the considerations, the staff recommends approval of this request subject to the proffers um, and the commission agrees. Great. Thank you. The next um, item is item number 12, which Duck Medical Associations LLC, located at 4501 North Witch Duck Road in the Bayside District. Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> Commission members, Eddie Berdon, Virginia's attorney representing medical, Wichita Medical Associates, LLC, conditional rezoning, all the proffers are our proffers. We appreciate being on the consent agenda. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, is there any opposition to this being on the consent agenda today? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Redmond is going to read this into the record for us. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. This is a conditional rezoning from A12 Apartment District to conditional 01 Office District. This is in the Bayside District, very near what we used to call Bayside Hospital. I guess we call it now Centera Bayside facility of some sort. Um, <clears throat> uh, this building has been here for 46 years. This is a housekeeping matter. Um, you know, it's an office building in an A12 apartment district. None of the offices will change. Uh, they are adding a fence to better screen the property. Uh, there is no opposition to this request. The zoning much better matches yes. the, um, you know, the, the real use that occurs on this. Um, and the commission, therefore, places it on consent. Thank you. Thank you. Next um, item on the agenda is item number 13, designed by Elena and corporate. A change of nonconformity located at 2416 Seaview Avenue in the Bayside District. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission, for the record, Billy Garrington on behalf of the applicant, designs by Ilani for this nonconforming change of use. Uh, there are two conditions in the staff write up. We're in total agreement with those two conditions. Thank you very much for considering this on the consent agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this being placed on the consent agenda today? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Edmonds is going to read this into the record. Yes, this is a, a change in nonconformity, kind of unusual application. Uh, the existing land use uh, is R10 and on the Shore Drive overlay. The um, applicant seeking a, this change in order to redevelop the existing 1,455 square foot nonconforming duplex with a taller and larger 2,500 square foot duplex. Uh, there is a request um, to allow the nonconforming structure to be enlarged, extended, reconstructed and, uh, by resolution of the City Council. The elevations of the three-story structure depict a coastal inspired architecture with architectural roof shingles, hardy plank lap, lap siding and black metal roof. So the Staff's analysis is that this is a, a replacement and it's acceptable. The increases a lot coverage from 1,400 to 2,500 square feet. Um, the, in addition, uh, on-site parking is uh, not provided for the duplex, but now the residents of this parcel are parking within the right-of-way. So this development will correct that problem. Uh, while the... <clears throat> So the redevelopment of the property will result in a replacement of an aging structure has no historical significance with an attractive structure designed with coastal theme. Based on these considerations, staff recommended approval. We decided to put it on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the next item on our agenda is item 18, Atlantic Park. Inc. and City of Virginia Beach Development Authority, located in the Beach District for a street closure. Is this um, an applicant representative for this? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Members of the Planning Commission, my name is Mike Culpepper. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Atlantic Park, Inc., and we accept all the conditions to the application. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Is there any opposition to this being placed on the consent agenda today? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Alcarez is going to read this into the record. All right, thank you. The applicant, Atlantic Park, Inc., and the City of Virginia Beach Development Authority is requesting a street closure north side of 18th Street between Pacific and Arctic Avenue. They are requesting to close a portion of 18th Street to be incorporated with an assemblage of property owned by the City of Virginia Beach Development Authority. This assemblage, which has been referred to as the dome site, consists of two blocks between 18th and 20th Streets and Pacific and Arctic Avenues, and the block between 19th and 20th Street and Arctic and Baltic Avenue. Similar, similar to the previously approved closures for 20th Street 
and Arctic Avenue. The proposed street closure for 18th Street includes an area to be fully closed above and below ground where proposed buildings overlap on the right of way and uh, subject closure underground only. Beyond that, to accommodate the underground foundation and pilings. The ground and air above the, uh, the subject closure will remain public right of way. Based on the application, the Planning Commission is recommended for consent agenda. Great, thank you. The next item is item number 19, Atlantic Park, um, Inc. In City of Virginia Beach Development Authority, it's an alternative compliance at address 1880 and 1811 Pacific Avenue, 319 and 18th Street is their representative for this. Yes, ma'am. Thank you again. Mike Culpepper with Atlantic Park, Inc. And we agree with the conditions set forth in the conditional street. Right. Thank you very much. Is there any opposition to this being placed on the agenda today, consent agenda? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Alcaraz is going to read this into the record, please. All right. Bear with me. Sure. The applicant, Atlantic Park, Inc., is requesting an alternative compliance for maximum building height, building setbacks, and several conditional uses. The Atlantic Park development proposal consists of two mixed-use buildings and residential commercial structured parking and an indoor-outdoor entertainment venue with an outdoor surf park. Additional retail and mechanical buildings surround the park also. The development project is anticipated to house a variety of uses, some of which ordinarily require a conditional use permit. These include an outdoor recreational facility, the surf park, open air markets like food trucks, farmers markets, et cetera, assembly for indoor component entertainment venues and reoccurring outdoor special events for outdoor components and entertainment venue with, outdoor, with other outdoor events. While the full range of commercial uses has not been finalized and will likely vary over time, additional anticipated conditional uses include bars, nightclubs, craft breweries, distilleries, and wineries will come forth. The request of the alternative compliance includes the uses listed above with deviations from form requirements as described below. The applicant is seeking alternative compliance to exceed the 75-foot maximum limit on the south half of the back and 45-foot height uh, on the north half. In addition, the applicant proposes to encroach into the 5-foot minimum building setback on this block as proposed, the building is placed on the property along the 20th Street and Arctic Avenue, resulting in a zero-foot setback instead of their standard five-foot setback. At the north block, similar to the northwest block, the applicant is seeking alternative compliance to exceed the 75-foot maximum height limit on the south half of the block and 45-foot height limit on the north half. The proposed building is approximately 85, 84 feet from the grade on the north side and steps down to a height on the south side. As with the northwest block, the applicant proposes to place the building on the property according and in, encroaching into the required five-foot building setback on 20th and Arctic. At the surf block, the applicant is, re, is seeking alternative compliance to construct a one-story commercial uh, building type for beach I'm sorry, on two beach frontage types, I'm, I'm, I missed that, 18th Street and Arctic Avenue, frontage types. So having said that, in addition, the applicant proposes to place the mechanical building on the property, encroaching into the required five-foot setback on 18th Street. With those conditions stated, uh, Planning Commission has re recommended approval for consent agenda. Thank you. The next item is on our agenda is item number 20, Wesley D. Boyd, um, Capital Finance, Inc. It's a modification of conditions at 172 South Plaza Trail, Suite E in the Beach District. Is there a representative for this today? Is there any opposition um, for this being on the consent agenda? Hearing none, um, Commissioner Alcaraz is going to read this one in to the What's record. No. Did you have this? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready for that one. You're not? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm still recuperating from that last one. Hold on. <laughs> Here. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> The 
the applicant Wesley Boyd is a modification of condition for a tattoo parlor. The applicant is requesting to modify the conditions of a previously approved conditional use permit to expand a tattoo parlor located in the shopping center at the southeast corner of South Plaza Trail and Daytona Drive. The applicant received a conditional use permit in July 2019 to operate a tattoo parlor in Suite E of the shopping center. The adjacent suite, Suite F, is now vacant and the applicant proposes to modify the conditions to allow operation of the tattoo parlor in both suites. The hours of operation will be between 10 a.m. and 9 p.m. seven days a week. No exterior changes of the proposed building will be affected and Planning Commission's recommend approval for consent. Thank you. All right. Um, the next is on our agenda is item number 25. I have that one too. No, uh, me. no. <laughs> <laughs> and Cosmos Corner. Um, KNRM Enterprise LLC and Nelson Industries LLC. It's a modification of conditions. And 503, um, 505, 507, 511 Central Drive in the Beach District. Is there a, a representative for this today? Welcome. Thank you. I'm Nicole Sankavage from Cosmos Corner. I'm the applicant, and we appreciate being put on the consent agenda today. Great. Thank you very much. Is there any opposition to this um, being put on the consent agenda today? Hearing none, Commissioner Klein is going to read this into the record for us. Uh, in August 2008, City Council granted a conditional use permit for a commercial kennel. Um, the applicant is now seeking a modification of conditions to expand the existing 2,100 square foot kennel to a total of 8,000 square feet. Uh, the kennel meets the, uh, the standards and is a, an allowable light industrial use that is compatible with the Navy easement and surrounding character of the area. Uh, staff recommends approval and the commission agrees. Great. Thank you. Chairman, that was the last item on the consent agenda and I move for approval for items 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 12, 13, 18, 19, 20, and 25. All right. Um, Chairman, I need to read a disclosure. Okay. As do I. Um, <clears throat> pursuant to State and Local Government Conflict of Interest Act, I have a letter on file making the following declaration uh, on the July 14 agenda. Items have been financed or may be financed by Town Bank. Uh, those are number four number six, number eight, number nine, 10, and 11. As such, I have made this disclosure that I'm on, a, on an advisory board of Town Bank, which makes no decisions on loans, and I believe I can participate in this transaction decision fairly objectively in the public interest, and I will participate and vote on these items. Thank you. Mr. Rebin? Uh, Mr. Chairman, while I will support the um, items on consent, I want to be clear that I am specifically recusing myself by uh, from agenda item number eight, Elias Properties. Uh, the broker for the owner is um, is a broker in my office with whom I often work and share business with from time to time. And um, uh, the address is 4525 Main Street, Virginia Beach, Virginia. All this is memorialized in a file um, on file with the uh, city attorney. So mm -hmm. I will specifically recuse myself from agenda item number eight. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Right, we have a motion for approval for the consent items. Mr. Inman, are you abstaining from voting on 14, 15, 16, and 17? Which is um, actually Marlin Bay, Bay Marlin, Marlin Bay, <laughs> MP Shore. Those are deferrals. That's a deferral. This is We're a consent agenda. Okay, you should have abstained from voting on that one. No, you know. On deferrals. <laughs> on deferrals. Okay. Yeah. I don't see the sky falling. If we could make sure that's in the record, there is a, a um, document on um, record with the clerk. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, circle back around. We have a recommendation for approval on consent items by Mrs. Oliver. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Horsley. Vote is open. 
By recorded vote of eight in favor, zero against, with one abstention by Mr. Redman on agenda item number eight. Agenda items number one, two, three, five, six, eight, 12, 13, 18, 19, 20, and 25 have been recommended for approval by consent. Thank you. Thank you for everyone who had an item on the consent agenda. They will be scheduled in the future with city council and you will get the date on that. Next, we will move on to the regular items to be heard. Okay, our first agenda item is agenda item number four, Bonnie G. Bright Sand Company, an application for modification of conditions on property located at 200 Princess Anne Road in the Princess Anne District. Would the applicant or the applicant's representative please step to the podium. Welcome, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Harold Jones. I'm with Sigma Environmental, and I represent Bonnie Bright Sand Company this morning. Um, as you're well aware, this application is requesting uh, uh, authorization to expand an existing mine that's been in operation uh, since the late 1970s. Uh, this is the most northern portion of the mine. It's going to be about 17.3 acres uh, of expansion. And uh, it's been reviewed by staff. Um, and we, they have developed uh, some additional conditions uh, for, the, for the authorization. We are now at uh, 23 individual conditions, uh, some of which have been modified and changed. And I think, believe three new ones were added since the, uh, the conditional use was reauthorized for, for an additional 10 years last year in 2020. So uh, we are in uh, um, acceptance of those, of those conditions, and uh, we're working with staff to uh, work out some of the details on, on a longer uh, uh, groundwater management and recharge plan. So uh, it's, it's been a pleasure working with staff on, on this particular project, and uh, we appreciate that. Right. Thank uh, you, sir. Any, any questions? Questions? No? Okay. I think Thank we you. have a speaker, so stand by just in case you want to sure. rebut on that one. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Uh, yes, we have one speaker via WebEx, Lisa Clarkson. If you would wait two to three seconds and then state your name and begin your comments, please. So, no other speakers. No other speakers. Um, <coughs> Mr. Horsley? Do uh, anybody have any questions? No questions, Mr. Horsley, you wanna? Let me, um, so we have no more speakers, so we're gonna um, close this and open it up to us up here for yeah, I'm, uh, uh, We would have probably placed this on a consent agenda had uh, not we were thinking we were gonna have a speaker. But anyway, uh, this, this pit has been operational, as, as Mr. Jones said, for uh, 40 plus years, and uh, Mr. Bright has run one of the best pit operations ar around and uh, it's, a, it's applying uh, sand to, this, to the city of Virginia Beach and other surrounding areas that, that's very much needed for us to continue to, to prosper and, and develop as, as we need to be. Um, I think this request for this 17 acre expansion is, uh, is very good uh, and the conditions, 23 conditions, I mean to keep up with 23 conditions Mr. Jones, you're gonna have a job, but anyway, that's what that's what Mr. Bright pays you to do. So, uh, so uh, we uh, we th we think it's it's fine. I think it's fine. The people in the area, uh, the, the rural area, are, are very appreciative of what Mr. Mr. Bright does for the community and all down there, and the the uh, supplies that he supplies for when when they're needed. So, so uh, if anybody got any other questions, I don't. I'm gonna make a motion to for approval. A motion for approval. We have a second. A motion for approval by Mr. Horsley, second by Mr. Cosson. Vote is open. By recorded vote of eight in favor and zero against, agenda item number four has been recommended for approval. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Redmond. Before we go on and before I forget, I would like to pose a question to staff that we just encountered whole calling in by Webex thing isn't that sort of horse and buggy now 
<laughs> I mean, I think we're kind of past that phase where we have to have, you know, multiple different kinds of technologies. I mean, this is one instance where it didn't work very well, um, and for who knows what reason, but it seems to me we're, you know, back at home, you know, if you want to protect yourself, go get a couple shots. I did. It was pretty easy. Um, I don't really see the need to continue that any longer. It just kind of, it's always been somewhat disruptive. And I think from my perspective, can't speak for anybody else, I couldn't hear anybody when we were sitting over in the convention center and all that stuff. I, I would kind of like to go ahead and retire that portion of what we do for whomever, you know, gets to make that decision. It clearly isn't me, but because um, I'd have made it all ready. It just seems to me that's a, that's a disruption that we don't need. So for what it's worth. I understand. Thank you for your input, sir. <laughs> We're good to get you. Okay. Awesome. Nice. I, I, I'm, I'll let you, you all discuss that. You can just sort of absorb. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Can we move on to the next item? Our next agenda items are 9, 10, and 11, Winners Properties, LLC, an application for a conditional rezoning, A12 Apartment District, and B2 Business District to conditional B2 Business District, on property located at 349 and 361 Nelms Lane in the Kempsville District. Welcome, sir. How are you? Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the Planning Commission. For the record, Billy Garrington on behalf of the applicant. I also have Mr. Kyle Corte with Wolcott Rivers with me here in the audience, uh, Mr. Chairman. The request that you have in front of you today is for Winners Property LLC. Properties located at 349, 361 on the north side of Nelms Lane. I'm sure most of you by this time have figured out Winner's Property LLC is actually the checkered flag motor company which operates in the city of Virginia Beach. Car dealerships spread out all throughout the, the city and if you have had a chance to look at one of them or to visit one of them and buy something from them you will notice that every location they have is well maintained, well taken care of and I think it's a good asset to the city of Virginia Beach. So the request that we have today is for this this area that you see in blue here, th a little bit more than three acres that would, there is a two-step process that we're doing here. Phase one is for an auto storage yard. Bulk storage is probably what the application that we submitted says because that's what, we, that's what it has to be worded as. Although bulk storage sure does, doesn't sound like it's very uh, uh, good to a residential neighborhood but it is bulk storage because you're storing in bulk we're storing automobiles is all we're storing and this is a lot that will be used in conjunction with a new audi dealership that just got approved on the northeast corner of nelms lane and virginia beach boulevard which will be under construction uh, very soon phase two of the request would be for the car wash building that will be placed on the building and when I say a car wash, everybody thinks that it's a car wash that's going to be like an auto bill or something like that just for the, the general public. That is not the case here at all. This car wash that is planned on this piece of property is for their inventory vehicles only. And with regard to that car wash building, there are some new condos that just got built just to the north of this property, and we have worked with your staff extensively. The car wash building will be built with the same building materials, the same color scheme as those condos next door to us, roofing, et cetera. So we worked with your staff on that to make sure that that was something that was agreeable. And Mr. Uh, Inman, I heard you bring up a in, uh, pretty interesting question this morning in regards to the car wash building. That car wash building needs to be relocated. And this is what we have come up with as a relocation for that building that moves it farther to the south and farther to the west and gets it much closer to the boulevard, which is the commercial corridor on this piece of property, than where it was originally designed all the way back on the, on the north side of the property. So we, like, we would like to move it even closer to the boulevard, but Mr. Inman, the problem we have with that is is that the front part of this property is still owned by Haynes Furniture and we only have a lease. So we can't build it on their property when we have a, a, a stipulation that if they ever need that property back for additional parking, we have to, to vacate the property immediately. So we've moved it as far south and as far west as we, as we can. With regards to traffic in this area, we think that the request that we are having, that we have put in front of you today, would be far less traffic than if this was developed as residential. Uh, I mean, just... The, the, uh, you probably wouldn't have 10 or 15 trips a day <coughs> if you're using it just for a vehicle storage yard. Stormwater treatment will be 
by underground infiltration systems so you won't have a unsightly BMP retention pond sitting on this piece of property. And with regards to the perimeter landscaping, we have worked with your staff and we have not only met the requirements for the perimeter landscaping, we have exceeded it. So again, it's our contention that once the landscaping gets mature, which we think will happen pretty soon, uh, it will make it much more agreeable to the surrounding properties that you have around it. So with that in question, we would, with that in mind, we would answer any questions that you may have, any suggestions that you may have. In the staff write-up, there are eight conditions for the, the storage yard and six for the car wash. We're in agreement with all those conditions, with the exception, if you don't mind, the condition number eight with the storage yard said we have to vacate that interior lot line, and again, that can't be done. So other than that part of that condition, we're in total agreement with it, but that lot line can't be vacated because that's still the property that's owned by Haynes Furniture. So with that in, with that in mind, Mr. Chairman, if anybody has any questions, we understand the neighbor's concern <coughs> about having a residential zoning in your area, <coughs> but unfortunately, the only way we can have a storage yard there is to zone it commercial, which is the reason why we did conditional B2 zoning, because we're telling you and we're telling them, you're not going to wake up one day and there's going to be a gas station there. You're not going to wake up and there's going to be a fast food restaurant there. This is the only use that can be on that property based upon this conditional B2 zoning to, to make it more agreeable to the neighbors. So I right. appreciate you taking our time to hear us, and uh, we'll answer any questions that you may have. Any questions? All right, let's uh, listen to the speakers. Oh, hold on a second. I'm sorry. Um, could you be more descriptive about the... Um, landscaping and how it has been enhanced over what was required I think the the, the, the minimum requirement is a 10-foot landscaping buffer and I think our buffer is, is 20 feet uh, which we have exceeded made it bigger and wider around the perimeter of the property and we have a, a six-foot privacy fence is it six or eight foot the requirement for uh, book storage yard is a 15 feet wide landscape buffer with a six feet uh, privacy fence Six feet. And, and what's that fence made out of? Is there a material specified? I don't think the material has been specified, Mr. Inman. It's not in the write-up. Okay. And um, as far as the height of the uh, plantings, the, the the, the one that the, the, it looks like there's several types of plantings going in this 15 foot strip. This is the category five, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Six. It's a category six. Category six, which grows to a much higher uh, height than, than the other ones do. Evergreen shrubs are a combination. Uh, there's crepe myrtles. Crepe myrtles in here. I can, I'm having a hard time reading the. It's pretty page, small print. All right, that's all I got. Okay. All right, let's listen to the speakers and then. Thank we'll, you. All right, thank you. Madam Clerk. Mr. Chair, we have two speakers that will be speaking together, and they're representing the Garnet Point Lake Condo Association, Janice Figueroa and Maureen Jacques. Welcome, ladies. Please state your name again for the record. Good afternoon. I'm Maureen Jacques. I'm the vice president of the Garnet Point Lake Condo Association. I'm Janice Figueroa Lopez. Okay. I am the president of the association. Okay. We thank you very much for hearing us today. We're not used to public speaking, so we're a little nervous, and I'll try not to go like a freight train. Um, as we stated, we're on the board of the Garnet Point Lake Condo Association. And we're here speaking in opposition to the winner's LLC checkered flag proposition and rezoning. And we do concur with your staff the recommendation that the rezoning not be approved and the conditional use permit not be issued. The residential area that would be affected by this rezoning consists of over 200 residences in eight separate areas. Nelms Lane is a narrow road that is the sole entrance and egress to our neighborhood. 
But this road is also used by walkers, joggers, parents pushing strollers, kids on bikes, folks walking dogs, and school buses picking up and dropping off children. One such bus stop is at the ad entrance to Atkins Reserve, which is right across the proposed emergency exit for the storage lot. The primary entrance proposed for the storage lot is across from a HUD and what we know as a Habitat for Humanity housing area. How will those huge tractor trailers maneuver down our small narrow lane and negotiate into the driveway? Also, I'm going to extemporaneously question the lighting situation. As we reviewed the plans, we noticed what we thought were almost 40 lights ranging at 15 feet tall with a downward direction. So if you have a six foot fence with plantings and 15 feet light numbering 40, that's going to look like a football field over there. <clears throat> Currently on the corner, as we have heard, Checkered Flag is in the process of putting in a new Audi dealership. Currently, they are storing cars on that lot and their employees park there. We understand that the new dealership will need the new storage lot. Where are those employees going to park? Are they going to park in the new storage lot? We really don't want a B2 zoning approved. We wish to remain a community pretty much shielded from all the hustle and bustle on Virginia Beach Boulevard. We do have an abundance of green space, mature trees, bushes, and wildlife. Please keep our zoning A12. Thank you, Janice. Dear members of the Virginia Beach Commission, I apologize because not only am I nervous, but English is my second language. I will try to speak slowly. My name, as, you, as she stated, is Janice Figueroa. I reside at Garnett Point Lake Condos, located near this proposed area uh, referred uh, to be rezoned. Like Maureen and I, uh, like Maureen stated, I am the president of the Condo Association. I have been a resident of Virginia Beach for over 30 years and have owned several properties. I purchased this property five years ago. When I went shopping for a home, this was the first property I saw in the area and fell in love with it. I liked it so much that I consciously made an offer higher than the bank assessed market value because I knew this would become my dream home. All this was before the current real estate search. I know this area very well as I pass by it almost every day. I walk from and to work. I walk the area to exercise and walked out my dog. This vicinity area is enclosed, meaning that there is only one entrance and one exit on a small two lane road. It feels safe and secure at all times, day and night. This is like a hidden gem for all residents. There is a playground at Grand, Grand Lake, one of the eight neighborhoods back there. And other than that, there is no other open space in that area. The land in question is the place where people and nature meet. This is like a mini forest where you will see baby hawks, bald eagles, red foxes, numerous bunnies, and a variety of songbirds. It is also the place in which you will see a father teaching football to his son, two children selling lemonade to help themselves and their parents, a man on a wheelchair interacting with his trained dogs, people picking wild blackberries, neighbors from different neighborhoods meeting each other. Needless to say, we are all from different economic backgrounds. We know this area is not ours and that it will eventually be developed. We also recognize its owners have the right to develop it. However, in my opinion, the subject combined parcels are better suited for a residential development than for commercial. 
We could only hope that the city would preserve it or create a park that did not affect the trees as part of the city's community plan for a sustainable future. One of the things this plan states is, and I quote, we are a model community of great places, both man-made and natural, that are inherently, inherently beautiful and are accessible to all, rich in cultural, educational, and recreational opportunities, with ample choices regardless of age, physical limitations, or income, and recognizable with unique character. Our urban and suburban communities feature a range of housing choices accommodating a diverse community, like we are, integrated with natural open space and places of historical and cultural significance. Farmland remains abundant in the southern part of the city and every resident has access to fresh local foods. We need a natural area here. Without this open space, we wouldn't have any other space within walking distance. Rezoning this land for uh, this land of natural beauty to accommodate a commercial development will be detrimental to our community and other communities nearby because it would simply open the door not only for the now proposed business, but also to some other incompatible land use in the future. All this being said, we at Garnet Point Lake Condos strongly oppose this rezoning application and kindly ask the Virginia Beach Planning Commission to reject this request. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be heard. May I state one more thing because you have sure. them on you your map. You have 10 minutes, so you can. I'm sorry. You have till the lights go off, so you have time. Thank you. <laughs> um, on the map, to the right, upper right corner where the blue is, you see that, thank you, Janice. There's a pointer right here on the, on the, uh, okay. oh, doesn't work. Go to the right, Janice. Okay. No, where the new, yes. In there is now built, doesn't show it on this map, but there are 21 brand new townhomes that have been built by Bouchard. Uh, and they started at uh, 300,000 and went upwards close to 400,000. So that was an enhancement for our neighborhood. So it is not a vacant space over there. Right. Also, we are also concerned ma about ma this. Ma'am, can you come back to the podium, oh, I'm please? Sorry. Sorry. So we can hear you, we just wanna hear you. I wanted to point No problem. We are also concerned about that space because everything is going to be blocked and that small pay space there will become a dumb site or some sort of an unsafe uh, space because it's going to be um, surrounded by, by walls. There's going to be, it, it, it is to us, it's also a safety. It would be a safety hazard. We thank you very much. Thank for your Does anybody have any questions? Oh. Yes. Any questions, Mr. Redmond? Yes. Would you take a moment, please, and just point out on that aerial if we can see it where your residences are, are located? Where we live? Yes. Where do you um, live? I don't think we're on there, Janice. <laughs> yeah, but we go here, Garnet Point Road, at the end, right there. We're up on the. If you look at the up at the far right, where it looks green, that is a lake, I believe. Mm -hmm. And if you go up past that, where our condos are on the other side of. Garnet Point Road, we're up on uh, Witch Duck Lake or Garnet Lake or okay. it's got a lot of different names, but that's where we live. Okay. So yeah. we access to ours through there. Yeah, there's eight neighborhoods and ours is the very last. So we enter, we, we only have the one entrance. So we enter through Lan Nelms Lane, mm -hmm. go around Garnet Road and at the end, that's where we are at. And we're only 16 units. Up. Okay, thank you. Thank you very Any other much. questions? Questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, ladies. Any other speakers? No more speakers. All speakers, Mr. Carrington. Oh, I thank you very much, and and I would like to point out also, she talked about the condominiums that have just been built by Mr. Bouchard. We have a letter of support from Mr. Bouchard because he looked at our request, and he was in a, he was not in opposition to it. He was in support of it because of the landscaping and because of the design that we have done with the car with the uh, car wash building, with regards to tractor trailer trucks. There's no tractor trailer going to be in this parking lot, okay? No tractor trailer is going to try and get down that two lane Nelms Lane to get back there and offload the cars. The, the cars will be offloaded on the new dealership that's going to be built on Virginia Beach Boulevard. And with regards to the traffic, people bicycle riding, roller skating, whatever, you're going to have far less traffic on that road as a result of this request than you would if you had 30 or 40 new condos built back there. So. 
With regard to the light poles, there is a condition in the staff write-up that we can only have light poles that are 14 feet high. They have to be di directed inward so that it doesn't illuminate the property outside of it. St when we go through detailed site plan review, that is always uh, looked at by your staff. And again, it's not going to be lit up 24 hours a day, and it's not going to look like a football field. So I apologize for us putting you in the position that you're in to where you have to decide between who's right and who's wrong. But unfortunately, this is the only place we have to come in order to get this approved. We have tried to be as respectful as we can to the surrounding properties. We've tried to work with your staff and come up with some guidelines that we think will be agreeable to you. And then the, the conditions that are in the staff right up with that one condition to where we just ask you not to make us vacate that lot line. We're in a total agreement with what your staff has required us to do. Okay. Any questions? Mrs. Oh, no. Oliver? Um, Mr. Garrington, the um, I guess the 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 back half of that where where um, butts against Garnet Point Lane. Yes, ma'am. And Nelms Lane, they just sort of interchange there. There are basically three houses um, that butt up against it on the on the Google Maps. Um, did anybody have any conversations with those? We tried to meet with, with the people, and they said, look, there's no sense in us meeting with you. There's nothing you can say that's going to change our mind. Okay. So, But we did offer the, to, to meet with them uh, before we got here to show them what we were asking for and, and see if they had any suggestions that we could incorporate into it, and they just didn't want to meet. And the two buildings across the street, the, um, they almost, they're two large buildings. I'm not quite sure what those are. I heard him say one of them was the Habitat for Humanity. Okay. I don't know what the other one is. All right. And so, and then um, Mr. Bouchard has already written a letter on the townhouses that don't show on that one He has given lot. us a letter of support based upon the, the landscaping and the fact that we incorporated the materials and the color schemes that he used on his project in our car wash building. And we're now moving it even farther away from, from his project. And the lighting, you said not 24 hours? It's just... Nobody lights up a car. Nobody lights up a car dealer 24 hours a day. Right. At nighttime, after nine o'clock, all you have is security lights to turn on, and all the rest of the lights go off, and it's just for security purposes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Klein. Uh, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Could you use the pointer and show me where those apartments are now on the map? Because the the site plan looks like you guys are right up in that corner. Do you have a pointer that works? <laughs> uh, probably not for five years now. <laughs> you talking about the new apartment? Yeah, the site plan looks like the your lot goes all the way up into the corner of Nelms and Garnet. Turtle Creek. Turtle Creek. Thank you. Does that make it that white portion? It's the, the, it looks like. That's the new there. apartments, Mrs. Klein? Yes. This piece of property that you see right here? Yes. Is the one that Steve Bichard, Bichard's I brother, see. just okay. developed, and he gave us a letter of support. That's where they are. Okay, thank you. Mr. And Redmond. Mr. Garrington, can you point out where that car dealership is going, the new Audi dealership? The new car dealership goes right here. That's what I figured. That would be the new Audi. It originally was going to be Jaguar Land Rover. Mm -hmm. Jaguar Land Rover was put up at Kings Grant and, and Virginia Beach Boulevard. So now Audi's going here on that northeast corner, and this will be just a overflow lot for their inventories for that for that dealership. Okay. Thanks. I thank you very much, and again, we apologize for putting you in this position. No problem. No other questions? All right. Thank you, sir. All the speakers, no more speakers. we're going to close this and open it up for discussion. I, have, uh, I need to inquire of the. Oh, okay, I'm one sorry. Of the, did one of the ladies who spoke oh. come back up for a minute? I need to ask you a question. The question is, what is the exact name of your condominium? Garnet Lake, Garnet Lake Point Condos. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we're going to close this and open it up for discussion. Anyway, Mr. Chairman, I won't be participating in any further, and I have a conflict of interest. Well, these are individual. That's the condo association I represent. My firm represents. So, okay, I'm out. I I have a I do have a question for um, the civically 
I have one question. Where are your condos? All over the place. If you don't mind coming up here. Let me show you. No, I have them. I okay, just want okay, them okay. to answer the question. Okay. Can you go back to the picture that, okay, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, we, the pointer up there works now on the pointer. Can you zoom out a little bit on that photo mm. for me? Ma'am, the pointer on the, on the, on the, right there. Thank you, Caroline. Works. It's a static map that she can't pull out. Oh, that's yeah. okay. He zoomed out good enough. That, that's where we are. Yeah. You're right on the lake. Okay. The and can you, can you sort of circle where Garnet Lake condos is? Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's right there, uh, where she's pointing at. It's not on the map because the lake is over there. We are on the lake. Okay. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. And I am surprised that you haven't received any other, because we have spoken to other people that supposedly were going to speak again. No, I got it. Yeah. And they were at no. Bouchard, some of the owners. <laughs> okay. Because Bouchard doesn't own it anymore. Right. Thank you. Okay, so we've opened it up for us to discuss. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go? Did you have a hand, Mr. Evan? Yes, I did. I don't particularly care for this application in the sense that, I mean, I would just kind of prefer apartments or condos on a site that's zoned for multifamily as it is. It's very hard to rezone things to multifamily these days because most people think they're getting a casino or something oddly. Um, here's an instance where some folks think it would be better to have, um, you know, something that would fit in an A12 uh, zoning designation, and and I and I agree with that. I personally think it would be better if it were residential. Nevertheless, it seems to me a perfectly appropriate use for this piece of land. There's a giant furniture store right next door to it. It's associated with an existing um, or soon to be uh, car facility. You're, I mean, I can throw a baseball and hit Virginia Beach Boulevard. So it's hardly nestled back in the, you know, in the farthest reaches of things. Um, uh, I just don't find enough wrong with it that would cause me to think that it's not an appropriate use of this land. And uh, I might prefer something else, but I think there's a certain private property interest where unless something is just kind of wrong um, or doesn't really meet certain minimum standards, and it seems to me you ought to be able to make some choices about how you use your own land and what commercial uses might apply, and a residential is a commercial use in many ways. So I mean, oh, that's a long way of saying I, I, um, I'm going to support the application. I would prefer that it be a different product, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this product, and it strikes me as it's entirely reasonable and appropriate an application in this spot. Thank you. Anyone else? Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Uh, where did the attorney go? Billy. Mr. Garrington, do you, want to, do you have a question for Mr. Garrington? Yes. Can you come back up, Mr. Garrington, please? Does y'all's a prop? Does y'all's property? for the dealership adjoin the A-12 property any place? No, sir. Along? Okay. Here's the property that we have right here now, and then you here's the other property. But this front portion of it is the part that's owned by Haynes Furniture that we're only leasing. That's the part that we don't own. Okay, so you, can, you can't get there from there? No, sir. Okay, all right. Good. Anybody else? Ms. Klein? Um, I appreciate what they're trying to do. I think that the level of traffic um, is going to be minimal as an overflow lot. Um, and I think that that is a great place for it. Um, at the same time, we're constantly talking about how we don't have enough space for housing. And this area is beautiful green space. And I would prefer to save it for housing um, than to develop it since it is not just a vacant area. It's a green space. So I'll be voting against it. Okay. Anybody else? George? Um, I'm going to just say I, I'm okay with it. I mean, I appreciate the enhanced landscape buffer. Um, I checked out the car wash that's existing uh, off of Rosemont Road. Couldn't hear anything. Uh, I saw the whole 
um, landscaping that he had on site. Um, he, you, you really couldn't see the cars. Um, and the adjacent, one of the adjacent property owners is more or less uh, sending his approval for it. The, the individuals up front looks like they're about maybe a thousand, two thousand feet away from this property. Uh, I haven't heard anything from any other adjacent property owners, so uh, I'm, I'm going to support it. Okay. Else, anybody? I think, and you, to be honest to me, when you put the other picture back up there, I think it, it, the property fits more in the commercial area than it does the residential area. To me, it does with with the big, big box of Hanes and all right beside it. So, uh, with the, with the way they. Uh, buffered it from the residential area. I think it's a, uh, and I don't think it's going to create traffic down Nemes Road. I, I don't don't see that. They don't drive new cars up and down the road there. They'll unload them, put them in the parking lot till they till they're sold. So I'm, you know, I'm supportive of the idea. Ms. Oliver, I will. Um, I do know the um, applicant um, checkered flag. And I, and I know how they um, how they operate their businesses. And the one thing I can honestly say about them and their family is that they've lived in this area for um, generations, and they run and operate businesses. They excel at what they do. And um, when they say they're going to do something, they do it. Their word is just as old fashioned as everything. And if they, if they keep everything neat and tidy and they will protect the neighborhood and go above and beyond basically what is written. They always have and they always will. They are, um, they are one fine family of a family run business for generations. And so I, I can't speak highly enough about them and the way they conduct business. and. Um, in this in the community so I, I, I will support them okay um, I just want to say a couple things real quick this since it is in the Kempsville area one of the couple of things that I really like what the um, applicant said that the, the lights are not going to be on 24 7 um, there's just gonna be security lights after a certain time um, and we know for a fact that tractor trailers are not going to pull down Nelms Lane to block <laughs> school buses to block um, anything and I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure, in fact, I'm positive that this is going to be even less traffic than any type of residential use on that property. Um, so I'm going to be supporting it also. Saying that, anybody want to make a motion? Mr. Redmond. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the application, um, but with striking uh, condition number eight about uh, vacating internal outlines. Second. Did you want to say anything? Y yes, sir, Mr. Chair, if I can. The applicant uh, provided a plan noting that the building would be moved as well. Uh, we should probably include in the motion if the commission chooses to to utilize this layout, which moves the, the car wash facility uh, Mr. Revin? south. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the application. Um, however, deleting um, condition number eight and including therein the, um, uh, the new site plan showing uh, the relocation of the car wash facility to the more central location within the lot. We have a motion. And thank you, Mr. Tom. We have a second by Mr. Mr. Akrez. Vote is open. You didn't get it. Um, Mr. Inman. I'm He's trying. trying to abstain, but it's not oh, working. You, you heard it too soon. Cancel it. Button's not working. Okay, hang, hang on. Bear with us. Okay. okay, can we do that again? Vote is open. Not the rust off this place. Okay. All right. By recorded vote of six in favor, one against, and one abstention, agenda items number 9, 10, and 11 have been recommended for approval with modifications or removal of condition number eight and including the new site plan. Thank you. All right. On the next item. Our next items are agenda items number 21 and 22. Robert Nelson et al., an application for a subdivision variance, section 4.4b of the subdivision regulations, and a floodplain variance, section 4.10 of the floodplain ordinance, on a vacant parcel on West Landing Road 
approximately 5,998 <coughs> feet west of West Neck Road in the Princess Anne District. Thank you, Pam. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, for the record, Eddie Berdon, Virginia Beach Attorney, representing the family uh, members whose family had owned this uh, piece of property for 50 years plus, uh, as well as um, Frank and Debbie Mason, who are contractually um, uh, under contract to purchase the property subject to the lot being recorded by a plat. Uh, and Whitney McNamara has done, an, uh, and, and, and Bobby and the staff done an excellent job with this application. You all have seen applications similar to it. Um, more, more often than not, they don't involve a floodplain uh, situation, but that's come before this commission as well. Uh, the lot was created, the parcel was created in 1972. Uh, it met all of the required dimensional aspects in the AG zoning district at the time it was created. Uh, and, but for the October 2001 adoption of the floodplain uh, ordinance subject to special um, <coughs> rules, for lack of a better way to put it, in October 2001, it would still meet every dimensional requirement. And as uh, the staff report indicates physically, it, it's uh, high and dry, uh, but it is a good portion of it is in um, the, uh, the floodplain subject to special restrictions. Uh, the reason we're here is because a lot was created by deed rather than by plat. Um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, it was divided into two pieces. The other piece was on a plat, and this was a remainder, but the, they didn't show it on the plat. But it met the requirements just as the piece that it was divided into two uh, met the requirements of the court of the uh, the code at the time and it's been taxed and has a G pen ever since uh, and so I'm just asking that the Commission approve the variance that's required today to record the plat um, and then secondly there's a plan to build on pilings a house so it won't be a, a situation where it could flood minimal filling no trees being taken down uh, <coughs> whatsoever. Uh, the, the end of West Landing Road is a, a little hamlet down there with a number of houses and uh, the, uh, the folks in that little area have no objections whatsoever to this. My understanding is that they're uh, the same person who signed up to speak against Mr. Bright's Borough Pit is the person who signed up to speak on this, um, doesn't live in, uh, <coughs> in the area where this is located. Um, and all the conditions that have been recommended uh, are acceptable to my clients and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Mr. Bedon? Right. Mr. Bedon, am I correct saying if, if this had been recorded, it wouldn't, you wouldn't be here? We wouldn't oh, be here. They, they just, they didn't put a plat record and that happened all, all the time between the late 50s up until the mid 70s. And we, this commission and city council have seen these cleanups, they come along sometimes in bunches, sometimes. There, there aren't many left at this point, but this is one of those because the same family has owned this um, parcel for all these years. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, there had only been one speaker signed up. It was Lisa Clarkson, and she emailed us to withdraw her okay. desire to speak. All right. So no speakers. Move on. So we're going <laughs> to close this and open it. Mr. Horsley. Mr. Bedarn said it's kind of a, a housekeeping thing. We need to make make this legal because it wasn't recorded back back then. We've had a lot of these down in the rural area that were, lots were created by deed, but they weren't recorded. And so uh, I make a motion application be approved. So a motion for approval by Mr. Horsley, second. Second. By Mr. Um, Redmond. The vote's open. <clears throat> By recorded vote of eight in favor, zero against, agenda items number 21 and 22 have been recommended for approval. Thank you. All right, on to the item 23. Yes, sir, our last agenda item for today, number 23, Jeff Height Camp, an application for a conditional use permit, home occupation, retail sales, firearms, on property located at 1140 Cordova Court in the Princess Anne District. Would the applicant or the applicant's representative please step forward. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Jeff Heitkamp, and I am the applicant and resident at 1140 Cordova Court. Okay. 
Um, I'd like to establish two things today, hopefully, is one, answer any questions you Excuse may have. Excuse me, Mr. Heitkamp, we're yeah. having trouble with our sound system today. Do you mind speaking up some? I'm sure. having a hard time. Um, two things I'd like to do today. One is answer any questions you may have, um, and also hopefully try to ease the fears of some of my neighbors who are in attendance that are in opposition. Um, I've limited time to reach out to all of them, but I did contact some um, and tried to explain what my wife and I would like to do with the permit in the house. Uh, one of the things, obviously, that's paramount is safety. We are very conscious of safety, not only in our own home, but for the neighborhood. So everything we do will be in complete compliance with all the local ordinances, laws, both state, federal, uh, and everything. So we're compliant 100%. Um, we realize that the neighbors have a, uh, a concern about traffic, and we've tried to relay that, the fact that we will not be increasing traffic in the neighborhood because we're going to limit the amount of uh, gun transfers that we would do in a month. Um, I believe on the application we put four. Um, so, you know, roughly one a week is what we we're looking at as far as a, uh, any type of traffic in the neighborhood. Um, we would definitely limit that to hours of the day that are conducive to business, eight to five. Um, and these people that we're dealing with are not going to be, they're not going to be open to the public, put it that way. We're not going to be advertising to anyone, just anyone. They're going to be people we know people we vet, um, friends and family that we have in the law enforcement and military communities. So those are the people that we want to start with initially. Uh, and then in the future, our plans are to get a storefront, get an off-site location. It would be a commercial location. Um, but uh, th those are the things that uh, we, we wanted to help our neighbors understand that we're, we're not going to try to do anything that would <laughs> have people come in all hours of the night, um, have increased traffic, especially with children in the area. Or, uh, or firearms in general. I know a lot of times when people hear that, it's, it's a negative connotation, but, mm -hmm. but there's definitely a way to do it safely. And um, I believe that not only FFL, but most law-abiding gun owners are the most responsible in the, in the country. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. What is your firearms background? So I worked uh, for the better part of 13 years overseas uh, in support of Department of Defense and Department of State contracts. Uh, I was in security and security operations over there. Uh, so I've held firearms, carried them, uh, not only for my protection, but protection of uh, U.S. citizens abroad. And uh, I have a pretty good background with them. I've taught both my sons at a young age how to respect them, how to use them safely. And uh, so I've worked for security companies and in, 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 the, in the industry as well. Any other questions? I want you to do something for me, for, the, sure. for your neighbor's sake and for the public. Go start up in the beginning, because we've never really done this before, exactly what you're doing, how you're going about doing it, how you're getting these people's names and so forth, so people understand what you're doing, because I, I right. know it's gun sales, but with that word you just said, gun transfer, is more likely what you're doing. It's not really 100% right. gun sales. And then go into what's actually recommended by you, by the, the FFL. Is right. it, yeah, what's recommended, for how much, because this is a very tight regulated business. Very. And just go into that a little bit for your neighbors so they know what's going on. Yeah, the, so one of the uh, conditional, once the conditional use permit, if it's, if it's approved and granted, then the city of Virginia Beach Police Department comes out to do a security assessment. That's one of the things that we have to comply with. And then we also have an interview with an ATF agent. So a federal agent will come. We've been in communication with him over the course of the entire application process. And they have a very regulated, regimented interview process that they conduct um, that's exactly the same across the country for all applicants of FFL licenses. Um, I believe it's 88 pages long. <laughs> so it's pretty, it's pretty inclusive. Um, it's very in-depth. They do background checks. Um, I've had a security clearance for quite a while, um, up to the point of a top secret. Um, so they do their own security clearance or background checks as well as and the local police department so there's a lot of vetting that goes along and uh, everything's re recorded every transaction has to be recorded because the atf can come in at any time and ask for those records and documents mm -hmm. and you have to make sure that that's very well uh you know your attention to detail there okay all right any other questions all right thank you sir let's uh, listen to the sure. speakers all right mr chair we have four speakers Brian Fields, followed by Jeff Pilgrim. <laughs> Brian Fields. Please come forward, sir. Right. Yeah. Welcome. Good afternoon. 
Uh, my name is Brian Fields, and I live on uh, Cordova Court. Um, and my wife and I live on Cordova Court with our young children and are not in support of firearm sales from the residents of 1140 uh, Cordova Court. Uh, regardless of the number of transactions or type of clientele, there are a number of risks that would be introduced which do not in, in, that are, do not exist today, including an increase, in, increased traffic to the neighborhood on a dead-end street where my little kids ride their bikes and where, they, where my daughter learned to ride her bicycle for the first time. It's on a, a little cul-de-sac on that thing. And, um, and a new risk of crime or robbery as a result of firearms being associated with the, uh, the residents via the FFL. Um, the risk to safety, uh, threatening life and property, the introduction of hazardous material and toxins to the neighborhood, the negative impact to de the desirability and value of the surrounding properties, um, the increased probability of fire given the inter introduction of volatile materials in a heavily wooded area. Finally, the following of acquisitions of permits and the initial required safety requirements and checks, there are not regulations in place that are rigorous or frequent in order to ensure compliance through the duration of the business in the residence. For these reasons, we believe that this business is better suited for a commercial location and is not compatible with the surrounding neighborhood. Thank you for taking the time into uh, uh, these risks into consideration, continue to uphold the safety, quality, and character of Lagomar. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Mr. Pilgrim, followed by Betty Plamquist. Good afternoon, I'm sir. Pilgrim. I live at uh, 2200 Zia Drive in Lagomar, and I'm opposed to selling firearms in a residential section of Lagomar. Firearm sales would de deviate from the provisions of residential zoning. Nearly every day, individuals being killed or maimed by intentional or random shootings. Drive-by shootings is a phrase used by the media to describe the killings. Radio and TV is stories every day about shootings or somebody getting shot. Last week, a 10-year-old picked up a loaded gun from inside his house and shot a friend. Last March, two individuals were killed and eight individuals were injured in the oceanfront of Virginia Beach. Tragedy follows gun possession. We remember very well the mass tragedy in Building 2 at Municipal Center when 12 people were killed and four people were injured. Within 10 miles of Cordova Court, there are two businesses selling firearms in, in uh, commercial areas across from Oceana Commissary and beyond Hooters on uh, General Booth. There are no reliable counts on the number of firearms in Virginia Beach. But with the advent of shootings that take place every day, it would be an injustice to our citizens' livelihood to authorize a source that would introduce more firearms. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Betty Plamquist, followed by Megan Zasuski. My name is Betty Palmquist. I'm a neighbor. Um, first, I'd like to say that there are good neighbors. I live right next door, actually 20 feet away from them. Um, I'm not against firearms. I feel strongly that a business selling transfer firearms doesn't belong 20 feet away from my home. The property line is 10 feet from my house. Theirs look the same. My property value may also be affected. From the first email, March the 11th, which I didn't get a copy, friends gave it to me because my name wasn't on the list that they had. I understand, I understood the, the business was engraving on firearms. Now finding that the machine needs ventilation for possible toxic air and makes noise that may not be part of the business. I can't see a way to enlarge their house to accommodate this. Only firearms are left. If FFL approves their house, the address is made public, I understand who will be at the house when they go away for a few weeks, months at a time. 
Safety is very important for our 35 homes that their clients must pass coming and going after turning off Camino Real. There's no other way out. I asked, I asked the applicate, applic yeah, I asked them to explore connecting with an established business until they have the funds and the clientele to open their own business. I also asked the applicants if their relatives wanted to move next to a house that's FFL approved, would they say you may want to think secondly so that couldn't hamper my selling the house. I just um, ask them to please think of others. They, there's plenty of other places that they could have this business in a commercial setting that are safer. Um, that's my whole opinion. Thanks for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Our final speaker is Megan Zasuski. <coughs> Welcome. Thanks. Please mm -hmm. take your name for the record. Um, my name is Megan Zazuski. I'm speaking in opposition to the CUP request for sale and transfer of customized firearms. My husband and I live on this, have lived on the street for eight years and are the parents to two children, ages five and three. We play on the road with Brian's kids all the time. We couldn't have selected a better community to raise our family in, and my biggest issue with the application is the impact it'll have on neighborhood safety. I'm greatly concerned about traffic. The staff notes list a recommendation of four sales per month, but this does not equate to four additional vehicles on our street. Based on our discussion with the applicants, they're planning on providing customized engraving or firearms. This means at least one consultation visit, one visit to drop off the firearm in person, and one visit to pick it up again. They stated they need the FFL because the engraving will require the weapon to be held for more than 24 hours. This means, at a minimum, there'll be three trips per sale per month, and although this may seem insignificant to staff, the design of our street is very unsafe. The current minimum centerline radius requirement for a minor street is 125 feet. Our street has approximately 75 foot centerline radius. There's extremely poor visibility as you enter and exit the road, which is made more unsafe by the fact that vehicles have to share the roadway with pedestrians. The older section of Lagomar does not have any sidewalks, so when I'm running, walking, or biking, which we do daily, is at risk around the blind curve. Unfortunately, you can't see what's coming around the curve until you're in the middle of turning, and although residents who frequent this road are aware of the turn, it can easily be mismaneuvered by unaware drivers. I understand that the street was designed under older requirements based on the age of our subdivision, but what is currently an unsafe condition will only be made worse by commercial customers who don't have the same vested interest in our neighborhood. We also live at a dead-end street, meaning that these commercial customers will encounter the turn twice for every visit they make. I asked how the proposed sale quantities are enforced and was told by the staff planner, it's up to the applicant themselves to limit their sales and then reliant on the neighbors to report excessive cars. The system seems inherently flawed and unrealistic. In addition, having an FFL associated with the residential address opens up the potential for theft and robbery. I understand they're planning to keep it limited, a limited inventory on hand, but just the assumption that they have firearms poses a risk for crime. Lastly, I firmly believe that adding a commercial business to a residential neighborhood adversely affects and changes the character of the neighborhood, similar to the addition of short-term rentals. We live in one of the oldest, most established neighborhoods in Virginia Beach. We specifically chose Lagomart and our dead end streets, a place to raise our family. <clears throat> the addition of the CUP will not enhance the neighborhood, as stated in the staff notes. We already have a great place to live. The only thing that needs to happen is to maintain the fact that it's only residential. The applicants are very kind people. They're extremely smart. We wish them tons of success in the new business. We just ask this be done in a more appropriate, more safe commercial location. Thank you for your time. I have a question. Yes. Um, if the if one of your neighbors was selling jewelry or foods or anything else on the street, the expectation would be that there were increased volume of traffic. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's my understanding we cannot regulate firearm sales, so we have to view this as a retail business. Yes. So if your neighbor was instead selling jewelry or operating a daycare, how would your thoughts be the same or different? My thoughts would be exactly the same. I mean, I wish you could see the blind curve entering our roadway. It's a hazard every single day. Yeah. So I don't think any commercial business should be done on a residential street, especially one with a poor design like ours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Sir, that's the last speaker, correct? Correct. Would you like to come back up for rebuttal? So yes, after <clears throat> listening to those in opposition, uh, duly noted all of their uh, their concerns. Um, <clears throat> I would respectfully disagree with a few. Um, 
the storage of hazardous chemicals and materials, I'm not storing any, any materials or hazardous waste. Um, I've had my own personal firearms there uh, for a while um, in a safe, obviously, and um, I don't anticipate having any large volume of uh, firearms there above and beyond that, maybe one or two. And they can also be parts. They don't have to be complete firearms. Um, as far as the traffic's concerned, I have the ability to, to go ahead and if I have a client or a customer, I can go to them, retrieve the part that they'd like to modify or cust you know, customize, bring it back to my house, and then again return it to them. So the increase of traffic there would not be anything more than my own personal driving back and forth in the neighborhood. Um, I do understand the uh, long-term effects of a possible home value devaluation or valuation depending on how that goes with uh, the license that's why our long-term plan is to move it we do, we do not intend this to be a uh, you know and I, and I say long term definitely less than you know three to five years at the most I, I mean I wouldn't even see it going that far before we can move into a different venue okay any questions I do just okay. some general questions so uh, maybe I missed it I excuse myself for a minute but when, when a, um, a part or a gun or whatever you have is being delivered, or is that being delivered by a mail carrier or are you picking it up or someone bringing it to you? How does that work? It could be all three. Um, okay. if, if it was an online uh, purchase, then yes, it could be delivered via UPS or FedEx or the Postal Service. And you have that regularly down your street? Yes. Okay. Yes. For other. Um, and Amazon. <laughs> and just a general question. I mean, I have a gun. I didn't want one. My dad made me get one, so I got one. So just curious, if I was to want to sell it, mm -hmm. what do I have? Well, I'm just asking. And I'll tell you why. What do I have to go through to sell it to somebody? Well, the the laws, you can, you can do a person-to-person -person sale. Um, obviously, every state's different. Um, in Virginia, um, I'd have to look at the details of if you wanted to do an individual to individual. You can take it to an FFL. They can sell that for you if you prefer. Um, but say, if a friend comes to my house and wants to buy my gun, you can you can write up a receipt and do a transaction okay. and do it yourself. That's all. Yeah. That's yeah. all I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'll tell you why when, when he's done. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> so so you 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 will you will do basically order. If somebody tells you they want a gun, a certain gun that you want, they want to get, and you you will order it and then just transfer it to them. That's a, that what you is that the type thing you almost they would they would order and pay for it but they would have to list an FFL send to, to send it to correct send it to you to correct for the transact so really really the safety part is mm -hmm. is a is kind of a moot issue it looks to me like yes and like I said the, all everything that will be coming to me whether limited um, basis will be stored in a safe and again the police department is going to do a security assessment on that as well as the ATF. I mean, the other people in the neighborhood could have more guns in their homes That's than true. you do, than, <laughs> and nobody true. knows about it right now. So, That's true. so the and the traffic issue. I mean, that's uh, you know, there's more delivery trucks that go up and down the road every day. You know, everybody's buying stuff online now. So, uh, okay. delivery truck after delivery truck making drops to people's homes. So, I would never think that you that would be more of a concern than the traffic that you're going to generate, right. but. But I, I would you say uh, I don't? You probably wouldn't generate more than one vehicle a day, probably. Yeah, for myself, you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yes, yeah. myself. And my that would be a max because you're not planning on moving but one gun a week, something like Correct. that. So. Okay. Any questions? No. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. No more speakers. We're going to close this and open it up for us. Um, before we do that, Mrs. Wilson, can you give us our little spiel on firearms um, the Commonwealth of Virginia is the is the entity that regulates firearms the city has no authority to regulate buying selling anything uh, in regard to firearms the federal um, ATF and the state of Virginia are the people who regulate firearms um, as such we don't have a an ability to base our decision on the fact that the sale is of a firearm. We have to call it retail sales, and we do. <coughs> it is just like selling anything else. Wreaths, 
what was your example? Jewelry. Jewelry, anything out of your home. It's just a retail sale. You have to look at it as a generic sale of, in retail and not as a gun sale. Thank you. Um, I, have a, I have a comment. Yes. Um, so I'm a social worker. I work in mental health. Um, I have a young child who recently learned how to ride his bike and I took the letters from the neighbors very seriously. Um, I reached out to the staff, um, Antoinette, and I had her send me information about the um, similar uh, applications that were submitted and she was able to go back as far as 2014. One, two, three, four. Um, I have only been present for one other of them. Um, of those four, um, all were approved by the Planning Commission um, and the City Council approved them except one was withdrawn. Um, I asked Antoinette to let me, to see if there were any complaints from neighbors because if you don't have any control over once it's there, you can at least let the city know, hey, it's not working. And she said of all f um, three of the currently active FFLs that are residential, zero have received any complaints. Um, and so I, that meant something to me. Um, I, I do hear the concerns um, of the people that I've had in front of me. I find those, um, those gentlemen um, to be of the utmost integrity and people that if there were gonna be firearm sales next to my house, those are the ones that I would want to be in charge of it um, because it's not something that as the commission we, can, we have much control over. Um, so I did take your concerns very seriously um, based on retail sales only. Um, I intend to approve um, the application. Um, if there are traffic concerns, I urge you to bring them up to traffic. Um, I've had to do the same thing in my own neighborhood because of safety issues. Um, Anybody else? George? Yeah, I, and the reason I was asking the question, I was just curious, because I know a lot of individuals have guns and they keep them in the ha their houses and if, they, if they're interested in selling to a friend, it could happen, you never know. But I commend this applicant because he wants to do a lawful application to do it. He wants to get security clearance to do it. He wants to vet the customers. He wants to have a secure place to do the transaction. And not only that, he's, he's, he's uh, very familiar with, uh, with the arms. And uh, I haven't said that, I'm, I'm very comfortable in, uh, you know, approving it also. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Horsley? I make a motion we approve the application. Motion for approval by Mr. Horsley. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Redmond. Vote's open. Mr. Redmond. Okay. By recorded vote of eight in favor, zero against. Agenda item number 23 has been recommended for approval. Thank you. Um, any other business? Any new business? Any old business? Mr. Khan, we're good? Just Stay tuned. Uh, there should be a workshop on the last portion of the short-term rental ordinance <laughs> that needs to be heard. Uh, I'll more than likely be presenting to council to vet through the changes to Section 241. <laughs> so right. just stay tuned for August. All right. Thank you, sir. Stay you talking about a right. council, council workshop. Wow. Yes. Are we? Item Not for you guys. Council, council workshop. Not us. Right. Not us. It was a 30-item right. agenda. We are adjourned. And we finished before 2 o'clock.